Hey there, and welcome back to episode 10. Uh, we're moving right along. We've done eight of the 12 principles, and today we're going to be covering secondary action and exaggeration. So what's secondary action? Secondary action is animation that helps to add realism to a performance. It's usually layered on top of the primary action. Well, what does that mean? A big fat guy runs across a parking lot. His run is the primary action. His jiggling rolling bits are the secondary action. A squirrel jumps up onto a tree and climbs it. The jump and climb are the primary action. The crazy flapping tail is the secondary action. A huge mech is stomping around and shooting stuff. That is the primary action. His swinging cables, recoiling guns, and flying shell casings are the secondary actions. Secondary action should always remain secondary. It should always support the primary action and never become the center of attention. So a little girl can be walking to her friend's house, but scratching her arm or twirling her hair or chewing bubblegum. In either of these scenarios, the walking to the friend's remains the focus of the scene and the secondary action just adds to the performance. So let's take a look at some secondary. Okay, so here we go again with these guys. If you watch this clip here, he kind of settles back into that pose and just kind of like strums his fingers. It's just an extra thing just to kind of sell the board. I'm just like, ugh, I'm sick of being here. It doesn't take away from anything. It's just kind of a little thing. The pose would still work if you just sat there like this, but it's just an extra little thing to just be like, wow, I'm really, really bored. Okay, here's another example, secondary, where I had to do a bunch of like plates and stuff. So the primary action would be the actual running, but then the secondary action would be the jiggle on this chest plate, the jiggle on these spears in here, all these chest plates here that are buckling, the straps, all this stuff. Here's another one. This is before the ribbons were done, but you could see just like the stomping, the looking around, the snort. He could have just been kind of just standing there stomping, but like with the snarl and the lean forward and the blinks and all the extra little things, those are all secondary. Now this one, this is a secondary party. This one's got everything going on. We've got cloth, we've got tails, we've got armor. So this one took forever to animate. Things like off and on for two weeks on this but if you watch if you watch the cloth in the back there's secondary on that and then the on the satyr here his panels they're flapping around and then when the minotaur gets chopped you watch his tail will flap and then same with that piece of cloth on the back Okay, so we've been away from Squishy for a while. I was going to use Simple Guy for this week, but he just takes a lot longer to animate, and it's just easier to do this particular principle with Squishy. So um, all the stuff we're going to learn here is very applicable to him. It just takes more time. So we need something to put on top of him that we can do some secondary action with, and I've uploaded a little bobble headpiece to the share site. So you can download that and we will go import it. Bubble. Okay, so it's going to come in at the origin like this. All you got to do is just move it up into position. Select it, hit the W. Just kind of put it where you want it. You can scale it if you want. I'm just going to leave it like this. So you can see the curve a little bit. And then going to do dynamic parent, add a parent. My little purple dot's going to come up, and I'm just going to parent this square to the top circle here. So now when we rotate this, our bobblehead is going to come with it. So after that, after you use this positioning kind of curve, you can just hit H and just hide it so it's out of the way because we don't need it anymore. Okay, so for animation, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do because we just need some motion so that we can layer some secondary with this bobble thing on top. So I think for now I'm going to do it like how I have, just for speed's sake. I will select the main. I'm not going to use the actors of the curves just yet. I'll just throw down some keys 
with this. So maybe I'll have them slide over here, slide back, and then take a couple jumps, something like that. So uh, hit the W key and hit S. If we pop open the graph, you can see we've cur we've keyed our positions. I don't think I'm going to rotate on this one. So I close up the graph, and then we'll just, just start throwing keys willy-nilly. So I'll put one over there. Push back here. Hop in my side here. Again, that's just with control space bar to bring up the windows. I do that a lot. Um, so whip over, whip back, maybe sit there for a bit. Do an anticipation, then we'll jump up, come down, jump up, come down, and just a little jump, settle there, maybe a slide at the end. So that's it, just boop, bang, bang, bang super quick. So I'm going to go in tweak that curve super fast. Uh, so let's look at our Z curve first. Uh, we know we like this part. I'm going to speed into that and come back for a settle. We can delete all these keys in here. So now it's just going to go one way, back, stop for a bit, and then go. Cool with that. And our position Y we know all about Y now, so let's select these bottom keys here. We're going to break these. I'll just tweak these curves a little bit, nice and quick. This one's not pretty here. Let me slide this whole pose back. Let's make sure we got it all. go fix that again this is just you can tweak this for days if you want we're just gonna just need some keys down quickly you could probably use your original bouncing boxes if you want but I just thought this why not do something different a little bit of practice okay so now we got one two boing 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 okay so the position Z I don't know if I like that. I think I just I, th I want this to be snappier, like moving forward more, and then come to a stop. So now it's going to slow into this, pause for a bit, pause, and then quickly bang, 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 and slide. That to me makes way more sense. Okay, so we got our basic move mapped out. Um, I'm just going to do a squishy pass on this, so I won't make you sit through this whole thing, but you can watch a little bit. It's a lot of what we've done before, so uh, we want to be keying these all at the same time, so we need our actor for that. So we're going to turn on Squishy Box and let's make a new action. Call it Bouncy. Okay, so and then we'll key it. Key it frame one. Pop open the graph just to make sure, and here we go. We got all our stuff all keyed on frame one. Doesn't always show in the timeline there. So close this up. Okay, so what do we got? We got. Set a key there. Okay, so it's a little bit later, and uh, we got this going on. Just more squishy box doing his squishy thing. Uh, so let's get in here and add some secondary to this. Um, for this, we could probably turn off the ring. So if you go into uh, the squishy rig, the CTL main, if you just turn off the visibility for that, it'll hide everything else. We can still use this one. 
and we could turn off our actor. Okay, so we're going to need a new actor for the antenna and the bobble, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to select this, and we're only going to be using the rotates, so I will just key that. Actors, create a new actor, call it bobble. And it's an actor, and it's from selected channels. Hit OK. So now if we go up to our groups, we can see the bobble has three channels in it. Let's rotate X, Y, Z. So I'll close that up. And let's make an action for it, too. Create a new action. Just call it, I don't know, second. Secondary. Okay. So usually when I do my secondary, I just kind of scrub through the timeline and just layer stuff over it, and you'll get a feel for how the stuff kind of is working. Um, this rig, there's a bunch of joints inside of it, and I, I rigged it up in a way that the rotation from the first joint feeds into all the rest of it. So we get a similar result to when we selected all the chain all the uh, all the rings on the chain and we get that like the double transform the double transform is kind of built into the rig so we don't have like 10 controls here to deal with we only have one just to make things easy so we can't really do any overlap with it like we can't break the curve and make any CRS curves but this should be fun for now okay so bobble 2 bobble 2 oh yeah, because I got a bobble group up here, so let's rename that. Go back up to our groups here. And we'll rename that. Bobble. Bobbly. Okay, so now we don't have a double naming thing there. Okay, so let's key it. And we're going to slide. Okay, so if this thing's going to start to take off hit the E key because we can only rotate so if it's taken off here it's probably going to be tipping back like that and then it's going to go over that's a pretty extreme move so depending on how jelly you want this thing you can push it accordingly if you want this to be stiffer then obviously you don't bend it as much so and then it's going back to here I'm just blocking in the big poses. We'll go in and we'll tweak stuff later. When it's jumping, it's going to be really down. And then we follows through. It might be coming up a little bit on the down. So right before he hits the ground, it'll probably be its tallest. And he's going to squash. This one's going to be a bit jarring. It's pretty quick. down is kind of following in again Tip it up. a little bit of weeble at the end Okay, so let's hit play on that see what we get. So that's working okay, but it would be nice to see the poses a little more context because he's covering a lot of ground here. It's kind of hard to keep track of what's going on. So if you pop open the bobble, there's a little geo group in here. We're going to select the mesh because it's unselectable through the interface. And if we go down to our actor, Gonna hit add selected item to the actor. And then we're gonna go actors and we're gonna assign onion skinning. Now onion skinning won't show up if you haven't set up an action. 
you need an actor and you need an action for the onion skinning to work. So I'll pop open here and take a peek at some of these options. So right now it's set to frames and it's going one step in, one step out. So if I put this to two and two, we get two poses in, two poses out, two frames. We could switch it to keys and if you had time markers set up, you could use those. So I'll just do, I'll do keys. So if we start to scrub forward and then let go, you'll see now we got purple ones ahead, green ones behind. Now it's kind of tough to, this is a bit kind of spaced out. It's kind of tough to kind of figure out how these are in relation to each other. So if we go back to the actor, you can crank this up. Say let's put it at five and five. Now you get a bit better idea of where you are. Okay, so I like these things to be a little bit darker than the default. Uh, they're a bit faded for my liking. So you can go in and we'll adjust the opacity settings and stuff. So if you if it's not showing here, just go down and select your group and it'll load up the onion skinning options here once you have onion skinning turned on. Come on. There we go. So again, we can adjust how many we want in, how many we want out, the color in and the color out. I leave those the same. I'll show you why in a second. And uh, you can adjust the alpha. So you can crank it down or crank it up to darken it. And then the step between them. Or I guess, I guess it's kind of like the fade. So I kind of like it a bit darker. Yeah, so now if you see if we scrub, they're just a little easier to see. So purple's where we're going and green is where we're coming from. And get an idea of what's happening there. But one of the things I really like to do is combine the curve checking functionality with the pose checking functionality of the onion skinning. So we need something to, to check the curves for. So if you pop open Bobble again, the rig, just open up to the bottom here, the very top joint, you can turn on a motion path. We'll add a motion path. So like usual, I'm going to edit it. Uh, my shot is 96 frames, so I will set the time in to 100. I'll set the time out to 100. And you can see kind of what's happening. So now if we scrub. We get in our onion skinning. We're getting our motion paths. And you can follow the path. You can see exactly now. You can really dissect what's happening. You can check your curves. You can check your poses all at the same time. I love I love, love, love this. So, going back to our little guy here. I could start adjusting some of these. If you start getting a weird rotational thing when you start moving the jack, it, it's probably this. So just click down here on local and then you'll be able to pull it back. Okay, so while I've been tweaking this, I realize my paths are gone. So with the last one selected here, we can go back and we can just set these two on. Now we'll have them on all the time, when, even when we're working on this stuff. a little bit of kink in the arc there so probably rotate that out and fix the curve same with here there's one there oh hey now pushed a little too far
can see there that that arc is that should probably be fixed right there. It made sense in my head, but the arc, it just wouldn't do that. Here we can push this down a bit, and you'll see how the arc's being updated. Oh, it's so great. It's just such a great way to look at stuff. So let's do a GL preview, see what we got. There we go. A little secondary action, a little onion skinning, and a little bit of curves all working together. Good times. Okay, so unlike some of the other principles that have kind of vague names, exaggeration is exactly what it says it is. It's exaggeration. Exaggeration means pushing your poses further. You might do a GL preview after your first blocking pass and find that your animation lacks the punch that you thought it had. Your poses look good, but when they are played back they feel soft. This is typically when you do another pass and push all the poses that might not be reading as well as you thought. An important thing to remember about exaggeration is that a pose might only be on screen for one frame, and so while you won't necessarily see it, you will feel it. Depending on the style of the animation, there will be varying degrees of exaggeration. If you're cleaning up motion capture, you'll be adding very little, if any, exaggeration because that's not the intended style. But if you're animating on a more stylized film, like Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, then your poses are going to be way over the top. Okay, so I went online and I found an old MyBridge clip here. That's a lady emptying a bucket. Itself not too exciting. Now we could kind of match her poses and roto animate this. So I've broken this down. I took her poses down. I've got her reach. She lifts the bucket up. Kind of holds there for a sec and then dumps it out. No big whoop. So we could do this. With simple guy, he bends down. He, what he's doing is not wrong, but I have a feeling if you played this back, it would be pretty lifeless. But it's correct if this is the style they're going for. If you wanted something very realistic, you wouldn't exaggerate it too much. But if you want to go nutty, we would have a big anticipation where his arm would come up. And instead of picking up the bucket like this, you'd probably pick it up like this. You'd bend right down, almost putting your face on the handle. And then you'd yank it up, pull your arms up instead of like this. And then before you throw the bucket, instead of just having it over here, you'd yank it back, big anticipation. And then a huge follow through as you dump it out. You might let go of the bucket here and then it'll swing around. And then you kind of all settle back at the end. So it's all, it's the same motion, but just all the poses are just exaggerated. Okay, so you might not be familiar with MyBridge or his work, but all you got to do is do a Google image search and you'll get every type of motion you could possibly imagine. And this is an unbelievable resource for motion. Um, I actually used one of the MyBridge horses to do that uh, Centaur run that you guys saw earlier. Uh, it's just, I think it was this one years ago. But yeah, amazing. Uh, People dancing, monkeys, horses, naked dudes fighting. It's got everything you need. Okay, so like I said at the beginning, exaggeration is one of those ones that kind of speaks for itself. There isn't a ton more I can say other than exaggerate your stuff. But we'll go through a few samples here, and then I'm going to try and recreate the day that exaggeration clicked for me. And I finally really understood how far it could be pushed. So here's a bolo skate again. If you do his, his kickflip here, it's a, it's pushed a little further. If you go and look at pictures online of kickflips, some guys kind of hit this pose, but usually it's more something like this. The front foot isn't quite as, you know, it's just bigger arms up, bigger. It's just more pop in the pose. This was a little guy I did just testing out the lattices. It's an old model I had lying around. 
he's a similar he's almost the exact same setup as squishy box except with with lattices but you could see how far you can push the exaggeration there if you needed to okay so here's a short sequence i did years ago um, it was for a show called Planet Sketch, and it was a very stylized kind of show. Uh, it was done by Ardman. I think it was one of their first CG uh, kid series. So every week there were a bunch of different sketches, and this one was called Ninja Handyman. So there would be some big problem in this episode. His uh, fish finger was frozen in the middle, so Ninja Handyman comes through to save the day. Bam! So that, that's exaggeration. Boom. The rig was crazy stretchy. You could do all this stuff. So he basically shows up and does a bunch of ridiculous anime type action moves and then solves the problem. And then the last of the exaggerations, this is probably the most exaggerated thing I've done in Moto to date. And this is the bolo dive. So here he goes and... This is a really fun project to do. But yeah, that's it doesn't get much more exaggerated than that to sell a point. So there you go. Okay, so years ago, my very first job, we had a new character come into the show, and he was this little, like, alien thing, and he would always kind of, like, he was super hyper, and he would just disappear and, like, reappear places or just pass out because he needed these, like, power naps. So I had a scene where he's supposed to, he's in the middle of a, he's talking, and he just kind of just collapses on the ground and then hops back up, like, a second later. And I was thinking, at the time, I've been watching a lot of Toy Story, so I figured it'd be cool to kind of have him flop down like Woody, because that's kind of a cool, like, ragdolly kind of thing to fall asleep. I thought it'd be funny. So I got my shot, looked at my boards. I'm like, okay, I'll do that. So I did a little, probably looked something like this. You know, so he just kind of, uh, he was awake, everything was fine. He just, I just fell asleep. But I played it back, and I'm like, it just didn't have that same kind of oomph that the Woody thing did. I couldn't figure out why. So I'm like, when I get home tonight, I'll put in my DVD and I will, I'll will just go through it frame by frame and, and take a look at some of the poses. Maybe I can get something out of there. So this is what theirs looked like. And I was blown away by the amount of poses, the how exaggerated the poses were and the amount of time they did them so when i went through it like my guy he was super slow he just kind of started like la i'm falling uh you know if you go and watch woody go back to toy mode frame by frame i don't know if they're all like this but the one i was looking at like one frame into it he went to all fk and you know what that means now because we did that last week he went all FK, all his all his stuff was just breaking all over the place, and just these huge wrinkled up poses in like four frames, four or five frames. You're totally crushing the model in like sideways, like I would never think to pose it. If you go back through there and watch some of that stuff frame by frame, you'll never believe some of the poses they hit. And that goes back to what I was saying before, that you won't necessarily see the pose, but you feel it. So like this one is ridiculous. And then, like, literally a frame after, a couple frames after, you're completely inverted. Legs are broken. Leg, like, it just, everything is so exaggerated and wrong. And yet, when you play it, it gives that kind of, it just feels raggedy. So you have their version. My version. One of the best uses of exaggeration I think I've ever seen is probably the opening scene in Ice Age. If you can go through that and watch uh, Scrat bury the nut the very first time he does it, it's a little bit outdated now because he's done it so many times, but the very first time I saw that, the amount of exaggeration in his arms and his face when he stomps the acorn into the ice the very first time, if you go through that frame by frame, you'll be blown away at some of the posing and how fast they happen. Like posing between two frames it's crazy so yeah go watch some dvds that's your homework for the week